Hi, this is Chris with a K here from the Thoughts and Theories podcast. And if you haven't heard about Anchor, it is hands down the easiest way to start a podcast. And I'll explain to you in five reasons, five very good reasons why that claim is solid. One, it's free, completely free. My favorite four letter F word. Who does not like the word free? I don't know nobody who doesn't like it. If you don't, what's wrong with you, right? Two, the tools Anchor allows you to use allows you to record and edit your podcast from your computer and your phone. So this thing can be mobile for you. Three, Anchor is going to do all the distribution for your podcast. So you can put your podcast on major platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Four, you're allowed, you're eligible to make money from your podcast. Something about getting paid to talk about what you want to talk about. Sounds like a deal to me. And five, it is a one-stop shop. So everything you need to make a podcast, you can get on Anchor. So all you have to do is download Anchor for free through the app. Or you can go um, to anchor.fm to get started. That's it. It's super simple. That's all. So don't, don't miss out on this great opportunity. Take advantage and start your podcast life today. Talking about our thoughts and theories, thoughts and theories, thoughts and theories, thoughts. What we talking about our thoughts and theories, thoughts and theories, thoughts and theories, thoughts and theories. Hey, 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 it's Chris with a K. Welcome to episode seven rhymes with the name Kevin. Welcome to episode 7 of the Thoughts and Theories podcast. If it's your first time, I'm going to be very quick with this. Um, make sure you you follow this. If you're using this, hearing this on the Anchor app or whatever podcast app you're listening to, make sure you follow me on those perspective apps. I highly recommend you get the Anchor app because of the fact you're able to send me a voice message. And the Anchor app is free, so don't worry about that. And also, wherever you're listening to this at, there should be a link that says chrisative.com, spelled K-R-I-S-A-T-I-V-E. It's named Chris with a K and creative put together. Pretty cool, right? Just visit that website and actually just link you to my social media outlets. You can follow me on as well and whatnot. Um, as well as my online merch store, I have t-shirts, which are cool too. So definitely support me, you know, if you enjoy and you find value in what I talk about here on this channel. So yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So today is Friday, or as many would say, Friday. You know, and what's been on my mind today? You know, um, I've, I listen a lot uh, to podcasts throughout the day because I have, um, yes, I, I work in 9 to 5 in the warehouse. You know, I pick orders and I pack orders in the warehouse. So I'm walking like anywhere from two to five miles a day. You know, getting a free workout, upper ab workout and stuff like that. Getting a squat game on and stuff like that. I don't have to deal with customers, which is a plus. And we're allowed to listen to music. You know, um, basically put our headphones in. So what I tr- decided to do instead of that is to work on be becoming a better version of myself, if that makes sense. You know, always working on me. You know, and um, different podcasts. I listen, I listen to podcasts such as The Breakfast Club. You know, listen to podcasts such as uh, First Take. Um, the show with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. I think it's called Undisputed. You know, um, what else I listen to? Um, Brilliant Idiots. You know, Charlamagne. I just love his authenticity. Authent- That's what's the word? His realness. His transparency. You know, do I agree with everything he says? Of course not. But I like the fact that he's a human being that likes to just keep it real. No political talk. No political correctness. And um, I'm not afraid to own up to his stuff, you know, and and learn and listen and agree, disagree. You know, um, a lot lately I've just been listening to um, a lot of Gary V. Gary Vandercheck. If I'm saying his name right, if I mess it up, I'm sorry. But... I love this guy because he, he's taking the internet by storm. You know, um, a couple years ago, it was a friend of mine. He was like, yeah, I listen to Gary V. You know, people get on me because he curses and stuff like that. You know, uh, growing up, I didn't curse a lot. Well, I'm not going to say curse a lot. I just don't curse. You know, it was just growing up, they, I was told it was bad, whatever, which is something that's a debate because I'm learning to question everything in life. But like, um, so I, I never grew up cursing. So if I went around people that were cursing was a turn off because like oh my gosh you're cursing 
But just because someone's cursing doesn't mean what they're saying is not valuable. Because there's people that don't curse and they still spew garbage out of their mouth too. You know, so whether you curse or not, you know, I'm not here to judge. I just personally don't curse because I, have, I haven't grown up cursing. And I like to make an adventure out of everything and like put a good fun twist to it. So instead of using curse words, you know, I, I use alternatives, you know, like if I drop some or stuff, my tumble, I'll be like fiddlesticks instead of saying the F word. And I'm not talking about F cat or free, but the F word. Right. You know, um, so I just don't curse. Gary V does a lot of it, but he comes from a place of of love. I know who he is. So the cool thing I love about Gary Vee is that this guy, he was he's a Russian. You know, the fact that, you know, in this economy, a lot of Americans don't like Russians because they feel that's that's the reason why Trump won. I'm not talking about politics or anything like that, but like I'm not a person that likes to talk about politics. But like Ru- Russians, you know, not a good name when it comes to America. You know, they've kind of never been. But this guy moved here from Russia. Um, who moved down here when he was young. You know, um, his dad was like a stock boy in the um, wine store, and his dad saved enough money to buy a wine store. And then, like, think he, I think he said, since he was in the age of 18, Gary, Gary was working like 15 hours a day. You know, he didn't go out, he didn't club, he didn't party like that. So, like, literally until I think it was like 17, 18. I'm not sure what age he started, but it was in his teens. But to the age of like 30 something, that's all he did. You know, outside before that, he used to. Um, so baseball cars on the weekends made like two, three grand a weekend selling baseball cars and stuff. So this guy had a hustle spirit, entrepreneur spirit because, you know, family came here basically with nothing. Was, you know, work hard, you know, basically helped his dad, you know, um, take his wine business. That was a three three million dollar business a year to sixty five million, you know. So Gary V is more of like a self-taught guy. He doesn't listen to other people and what they're doing. He actually listens to people who replies back on his comments to find out what's going on he's a guy that loves pattern recognition likes to see trends like to see where things are heading because he believes that how you win a business is find out where the intention is once you find out where the intention is you just you just stuff that space with a whole bunch of content and good content that is so that's his mindset i'm like oh that makes sense he just gave us a crash course on business and made it simple you know in life i realized that anybody who's a genius a genius is someone who's able to take something complicated and make it simple you know so um one thing that he talks about is that you know obviously a lot of people come here and it's unfair and stuff like that and we all have issues there's unfair advantages i'm a black guy if you guys didn't know chris with a k he's black you know and obviously for years if you didn't know i didn't know you know there's a lot of fuss about, you know, how, you know, blacks aren't usually given advantage. You know, the whites usually have the white privilege to get ahead in this country and stuff like that. But Gary pointed out a good point, in the fact, that the Internet made it fair for everybody because the reason why he says that, because let's say if I'm selling T-shirts for someone on the Internet and someone who's an Iowa white person, that's probably racist, you know, like in a, in a southern state, or it could be a racist white person that buys the shirt. And when they buy the shirt, what ends up happening is they're not looking at the color of the skin of the person who sells it. They like, I like the shirt, and they buy it, right? So, like, the cool thing about internet, it allows you to go in business for yourself, um, as well as reach people not only in your county or your surrounding cities, but, you know, um, locally, statewide, nationwide, and even worldwide, as well as, you know, reach a bigger a bigger audience before and then in fact the cool thing about internet the internet has become a free university it has become college to me and what i mean by that is people ask me if i go to school i'll be like no nah, i go well no but yes i do and what school is that chris it's called youtube university it's free the only tuition is a gmail account that's all you need to start a youtube account or you can just go on google which is on which you, which owns youtube all you have to do is go on you Google or YouTube and type in how to start a business, all this stuff. That's what Gary just views away. He's like, do that. Trust me. No, it'll probably take t- six months or however long it takes you to learn something. But there's somebody on there that's teaching you something for free, what you know universities would charge and stuff, and you can learn. So Gary is very big on like um, you understand that you will fail at stuff and delight in your failures because your failures are not necessary L's and losses, but L's and lessons because you're learning. 
and you don't have to live life with the regret knowing oh i wonder if that right worked and be, but because you've done it and you felt that you know what not to do and it help you optimize and make you be make better smarter decisions to be better at whatever you're trying to excel in so i just like his approach because he's a very practical guy he's all about you know work hard work hard but he's very practical in a sense that he likes to tell you to do things that he knows will work you know um because everybody's just trying every he talks about how everybody that's on social media 99 percent of social people on social media that sell you stuff are selfish they're they're just looking for the sell 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 so but he's like no go a completely different route build content make sure you're you're plugging these spaces with content and providing value giving away all your information and using that as leverage which is genius you know because people don't buy from people they don't trust or like they buy from people they like and trust right and you can't like and really trust someone you don't know so if someone's coming to your face trying to sell you something you don't know them you're gonna like run the other way but if someone comes in your face and they're just providing providing value they're not trying to sell you anything and they're just being honest and transparent about them they're not faking it you know um, that person you're gonna be more willing to buy from you know so he's just like revamped literally in this past couple of days how I'm thinking about business because these past couple of years I'm gonna be, be honest since 2011 I've been trying to win a business but I've had the wrong mindset I have the mindset of being selfish and all about taking, taking, taking. If you ever heard in my previous podcast of mine, like two podcasts ago, I was talking about happiness. And I was saying how happiness, you would try and find a true true happiness when you're living a life. Also, it comes back to the Bible, you know, um, the two commandments, which is love God, love people. And re- you can't really love God if you're not loving people. And obviously, you can't love people if you love yourself. So first, find out who you are. Be honest with that. You know, and um, find out what you love to do. Find out what you're excited about doing. Go out and do that. And let that be your truth and live it. You know, but while in doing it, you're just giving away in love and love. You're giving and giving away. But if you're taking, you're taking, you're taking, it's not going to end so well. So uh, he's revamping how I think about everything. But it's in a good perspective because everything he says is stuff that's practical. And it's stuff that I haven't heard before, but it's stuff that subconsciously I felt down deep down in my side my whole life like man that's how I feel my whole life and it's something like subconsciously has been sleeping in me that he's awakened like oh my gosh that's how you're supposed to live like when he speaks it's like yes who cares if this guy's cursing it's about his attention his heart and what he's saying is true because he's giving up millions of dollars to help people you know and change people's lives perspective he's all about doing what makes you happy not about the dollar signs which is a relief right so the reason why i bring him up long story short is to talk about this he talks about okay um he's very practical he's like well i want to own a jets and that's something like not everybody's going to do i've put myself in position or have millions of dollars to do that but i want to talk to people you know who don't have the money and so talk about some practical so he talks about retail arbitrage which means you're, you're finding stuff um, at garage sales or a dollar store and then flipping it. And by flipping, I mean buy it at a cheap, cheaper cost and then sell it for a higher price on eBay and stuff like that. And he talks about how that's helped thousands of people make a lot of extra, a couple, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month as well, even six figures a month, quit their job type of stuff. So he gives away, he loves, he delights in giving all this stuff away. And people are like, why would you give all your secrets away? Won't that like make it harder, you know, and stuff like that, saturate the market? And I look at it as really like a no because of the fact that we live in a society where only like maybe one or two percent of people will do something about information in the first place once they get like basically the keys to what to do. Like one or two percent will, will rarely take action, you know, um... And two, I'm a big believer in the fact that there's no pie. That this pie, there's not only a certain amount of piece of the pie. This pie is infinite. That you can't divide the infinite. Like, there's there's enough room for everybody. That's what I believe in. Because a lot of us are trained to have the scarcity mindset. Which means, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only enough piece of the pie. I believe in that mindset in the sense that, like, when something first stops, starts off, like, you know, with social media, it came out. 
you know, when Facebook come out, you know, if you got on there first, you're able to reach people first. So Instagram started popping. If you got on there when it first started, it was easier for you to, you know, win because the organic reach and stuff, you know, they catered to that. But now they made it higher and they, they you know, they charged more. So the opportunity in a sense of winning on there is still there. So the, in a the sense, the pie is still there, but it just became a little bit harder. So it's not that the they became only certain pieces and the number of pieces shrunk it's just it's kind of harder to obtain a piece if that makes sense but what what he talks about is you know just doing retail arbitrage something that anybody and everybody can win and start winning this weekend which is something i'm looking into right now i'm not doing it only because i do uber eats you know like you know i'm in postmates which is my way to make extra money outside of work you know which is pretty cool you know, I just get in the car, pick up deliveries, take it, and hope, pe- hope people tip, tip right. But I might look into that just because Uber and all these delivery companies might not be around forever because these companies, I think they're losing money because the payouts are kind of getting smaller lately, you know. So I realize nothing's ever going to be around forever. So you always want to position yourself to be, um, to be at especially in business to push this yourself to be in a place where all the attention is going and not get left behind but what he says okay what if you don't have time he's like because if the thing is if you don't have the money then that means you have time like people like i don't have time but then he comes down and says this you do have time it's just when you get off of work what a lot of people do they go play video games they go netflixing they watch movies they do whatever it is they 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 do something that's leisurely or escapism, which is, you know, um, a moment in time of day where you're doing something that's not really productive towards you living your dreams and goals, in a sense, but it's just something to help escape you from the nine to five, the everyday hustle. But then he says, well, wait, but if that stuff makes you happy, if you're comfortable having the nine to five, if you're comfortable going home watching Netflix, if life is good for you and you're not complaining, then you can continue on that path. But if doing that stuff bugs you, and you want to be your own boss, then you have to sacrifice. And this sacrifice he talks about is might be next for next two to four years because we live in a mindset of instant gratification. So you have to develop the skill, the trait of patience. Because if you don't develop skills, skill of patience, it's going to kill you. To give you an idea, he invested in Twitter, he invested in Tumblr, not that so much. As, he invested in Snapchat, but like kind of late. But he missed out on really big investing in Uber. To give you an idea, he I think he said he was a friend of the founder of Uber and he had a chance to invest in it. You know, it was only 25 grand, which is he had the money at the time and he chose not to. But he said, had he invested that 25 grand in Uber, you know what would have happened? It would have been worth three to four hundred million dollars today. And he says he missed out and he takes full responsibility of it. And he's glad that the market kicked him in his face, you know, because he, he he revels in, in losing, taking L's, you know, he's like, he loves it because he, he learns it from it and he can come back stronger. So he, he just likes, you know, the competition, the challenge, the, the process of it all. So this is what you do for those who says you have time, you want the money, but you don't have the time. Trust me, you have time. The reason why I say this, because those hours you dump into the stuff, the leisurely stuff that has nothing to do with what with, with you live in your dreams goal this is for the people who's unsatisfied with their life you know not talking to those who, who who's happy with that but the people who are unsatisfied with life oh yes i'm talking to you so this is what he says to do um first we're, we're taught how maybe maybe in a sense sometimes how to make money but we're not taught how to save so first you have to make a decision to start saving money to live below your means he was like you know the reason why people want to have a house or the nice cars because that's what the quote-unquote american dream is is a house or car when the american dream should be happiness which i agree with you know and the reason why we buy the house and car is literally to impress people Impress people that's never really going to be involved in our life. So we buy this to keep up with the status quo, to keep up with the, I think, is it keep up with the Jefferson? Keep up, no, keep up with the Joneses. We buy all this stuff to impress people we don't like or don't, will never even know us. For what? To be stressed out, to not be made fun of or poked with like, oh, this person drives a putt-putt. He says, no, 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 I, I urge you to maybe sell your home, get an apartment, downsize, get a smaller car, get a piece of crap car. And work your butt off, you know, and then 
any any of the hours outside that you are not working so like as soon as you get out of your job any hours that you're not working and you're not sleeping those those hours that you use to play video games netflix or whatever you're doing your leisure or escapism sorry but anyways i had a phone call use those hours to go ahead and or and whatnot but invest in them consistently long enough because not because most people don't need that you're most likely not going to make money for a while he talks about real estate the reason why people fell in real estate because they're just looking for the sell 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 he was like if you're doing it the right way you might even not even have to sell in your first two years because this he said he likes to set people up for the long term and not the short term not to make a quick buck I'm like yeah when you set yourself up to make the quick buck you'll make money in the beginning but then it'll fizzle out when the market dies the only way to make sure you your business is foolproof no matter how the market is doing is doing it the right way which he says Give away free info, free info, free info, free info. Build up your audience organically. And then when they decide to come to you, it's because, oh my gosh. Like for real estate, teach people how, what to do and what not to do. And how, what, what the to do's and not to do's when you're looking for a house. So when it's time to buy, guess what? They'll come to you with no problem because they trust you. Because like this guy's giving away all this stuff. People will charge like $10,000 or $1,000 for and stuff. He's giving away for free. People will trust you and you'll build up lifetime customers, lifetime value and stuff like that. So that's the route I do want to take in my life. And whether you want to be a business or not, this is the route you should take to have the mindset of always looking to give more than you take. Looking to give regardless of what the other person is going to give you. That's kind of what love is, giving 100% and expecting nothing. So resetting and re um shaping what expectations looking like, look like in our lives i think that's very important so that's where route i'm on so instead of um getting off work and then after i do my deliveries for uber eats postmates doordash whatever etc um i usually get home i'll probably watch something or play a game you know and stuff right before i go to sleep but you know what I have to be accountable to myself because accountable is something accountability is something you should put on the pedal stool because the minute you do that he says life will be so much better because guess what most people make this mistake because we live in a society that does not put accountability on a pedal stool we take that accountability and put it in someone else's hands meaning like when something goes wrong we like to complain and blame someone else because if we complain put the complaint and blame in someone else's hand like oh it's this person that means the only thing you're literally saying to yourself the only way my life is going to get better if they have to change they have to do something when actually in actuality sorry i'm excited so slurring up my word in actuality if you put the blame on you, and I mean when you're in a good space, a good mindset, a good accountable mindset, not like beating yourself down, but like beating yourself up, right? Addressing that, okay, you messed up, but learning how you can improve from it. Once you switch your mindset to that, you're going to realize the only person to blame is me. And because the only person to blame is me, you're putting the power now back in your hands, meaning like, oh, crap, something's wrong. So the first question to ask instead of saying, oh my gosh, woe is me, it's like, oh snap, what am I going to do about it? So that's the mindset we need to have, right? Switching to your, your mindset to that, oh my gosh, is going to change everything. So that's what I'm going to do. So when I'm out, not out doing deliveries or eating, like, you know, just probably eating food and stuff like that, that's what I'm going to do. Working on my dreams and goals, which is obviously this podcast because um, my ultimate goal is to build um, a niche. My niche is going to be in human, I, I would call it human relationships. I, I, I'm like creating a whole new niche. I want to be good at building relationships, connecting people, and helping people flourish. You know, um, kind of like a, a niche is something like a category of what you're defining, what your work do, like doctors working in the medical field, mechanics working in automotive, and stuff like that. You know, police works in law enforcement. I'm Chris with a K with a podcast, and I work in um, human relationship building. I don't know. That's that's the niche I'm creating for myself. That's my goal, is to bring everybody together at the same time while making everybody better, while allowing people to be them. And this is the only rule. You only you have to be yourself. So the only thing you're not allowed to do is not be yourself, right? Because the moment you're not yourself that's when the happiness 
the possibility of happiness goes all out the window. Because now you're putting yourself in a position to be somebody that you're not, and you will never be that person. So be you by being you, okay? That makes sense. So yes, that's what I've learned today. It's what I learned today. Thank you, Gary V. Oh my gosh, he is shaking me in a good way. So um, I hope you guys took a lot from that. Please, please, please leave me a voice message about this podcast. You know, um, by just clicking on the Anchor app, I would definitely love to hear y'all thoughts and whatnot. It would mean so, so, so much if you do that. But other than that, thank you so much, you guys. You're awesome. Let me know your thoughts on it. Um, Yeah. And um, yeah, until tomorrow, which my goal is to post out podcasts every day because I have to be working on myself, which is this podcast, giving out my thoughts and theories every day. So that's my goal. So um, yeah, thank you for tuning in and listening this far. You're awesome. You're amazing. Be you and no one else. And yeah, you're going to do something great with your life only if you take accountability to it. All right. So thank you for tuning in and peace.